The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, 10 lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices saying, Jesus, master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to them, Him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, I'd like to speak this weekend about gratitude, a fundamental theme of both the first reading as well as the Gospel. Gratitude is a result of the virtue of justice. We owe others gratitude. We owe them gratitude. Those who have done good to us, those who have been kind to us, those who have given of their means to us. And in a particular way, we owe, out of justice, gratitude to God for all of the good in our life. Now, I am aware of those in these pews right now and in our congregation who have suffered tremendously and continue to suffer. And the first question can be, gratitude, Father? What am I to be grateful for? To which I say we remember our beautiful children, our beautiful spouses, the great things in our life that even in the midst of challenging times give us comfort and peace, beauty, truth, goodness, family, dreams, memories, all gifts given by God. A God who loves us as a father, mysterious as he can be at times. And to God we owe, I repeat, we owe out of justice, gratitude. Everything that is good in our life is a gift given by God. Everything good in our life given by God. Part of growing up, part of becoming mature is learning the importance of thank you of learning the importance of gratitude. I still vaguely remember, I think I was about six or seven years old, and being given a big, beautiful wrap box by my grandmother, and opening up the box, and what was it? I think it was pajamas with trains on them, okay? Oh boy, I don't want trains. I did not want trains. And so I cried out in the middle of whatever public park we were in, I wanted Spider-Man pajamas. Where's Spider-Man? Now, my brothers and sisters, the rest of the night is in darkness <laughs> because I think I've gotten out of my memory because it was so awful, okay? I'm sure my parents gave me a very stern <clears throat> talking to, okay? And I learned from that moment, however falteringly, the importance of gratitude, even if we don't feel thankful. Gratitude is not an emotion. I repeat, it is not an emotion. It is an act of justice given to those to whom it is due. My grandma spent her very hard-earned money, her limited money, on those pajamas. And even if it killed me inside, I was duty-bound to say thank you. Now, in my life since then, sometimes I've done well, sometimes I haven't. I know some of you are waiting for some thank you notes. Thank you very for your patience. <laughs> but 
I certainly learned that evening the importance of saying thank you and giving gratitude where it is due. Again, I repeat, everything that is good in our life, we owe to God, everything. And so, out of justice, out of maturity, we owe him thanks. How do we give God thanks? Well, first of all, we must be people of private prayer. By private prayer, I mean we speak in our own words. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of my life. Thank you for the gift of my family. Thank you for the ways in which you guide me and direct me. Thank you for the ways in which you forgive me. We give to the Lord words of gratitude just as we thank one another with our own words. We also must be people of graciousness. We must be people of service to one another, offering to one another the mercy that God has shown to us, the service that God has given to us, being men and women of service, of graciousness, especially supporting the poor and the weak and the vulnerable. But finally, and I would offer most importantly, there is the Mass. Sunday after Sunday, offering thanksgiving to God as an act of justice. Now, I know we got a lot of high V families here, and probably just as many Cub families, probably a couple of Nolan folks too, but I dare to mention the bag of Lunds, okay? The Lunds bag, which if it still is the case, has all over the bag words of gratitude, Grazie, gracias, merci. And there on the top, by the flimsy handle, Eucharistia, Eucharistia, the word for thanksgiving in Greek, the Eucharist. To give thanks to God is what we do at Mass. That's what this is about, to give God a sacrifice of praise in gratitude for the gift of our lives, of our faith, of our family, and of the things yet to come. We come to offer thanks to God in the Mass, to offer the sacrifice of praise. Sometimes one will hear, Father, I don't get anything out of Mass. I don't get anything out of what we do Sunday after Sunday. And frankly, I can find much more inspiring things on the TV or a walk through the park. Well, that's all well and good. But the Mass is not, first and foremost, a religious experience. It's not, first and foremost, a moment of inspiration to get you through the week. Now, I hope and I pray that something that boils over from this pulpit is somewhat helpful to you. I hope that our music elevates you and lifts you up and inspires you. I, I hope the moments of quiet in the Mass give you some comfort and rest in a busy world. But frankly, that's not what we come on Sundays. We don't come to be inspired. We don't come to be elevated. Again, I hope that you get that, don't get me wrong. We come as a matter of justice. We come because we owe God gratitude. We owe him gratitude. And this is the way, right here, that he has said that he wants us to thank him. One of the benefits of Revelation, one of the benefits of revelatory religion, that is a religion that believes that something from God has been given to us, is that we don't have to guess. How does God want to be worshipped? How does God want to be approached? He has told us, gathering together as his people to break the bread from heaven and to listen to the word spoken in the midst of the assembly, to offer up the sacrifice of our life in union with his sacrifice out of gratitude. My brothers and sisters, there is much injustice in our world, in our lives, and perhaps even in our families. And frankly, coming to Mass every single Sunday is not going to eliminate that altogether, I fully admit. But are we surprised that there is so much injustice in the world when we refuse to place God at the center and core of our life, of our week. My brothers and sisters, social justice, that is, tackling unjust systems, matter. That matters profoundly to build up a culture of life and of love. 
But we can only build up that culture if we have placed the Lord at the center and core of that world. Social justice must flow from the altar. It must flow from the mass. If we can get God in the center, everything else begins to fall into place, despite our brokenness, despite our weakness. Are we willing to place the Lord at the core, or does something else take its place? And then we wonder why there is so much injustice. We're unwilling to give God his due. My brothers and sisters, I urge us all to pray for a deep awareness of what we are doing on Sunday. Not coming, first of all, to be inspired. Not, first of all, coming to see our brothers and sisters, as important as that is. We come, first of all, to fulfill an obligation. We come, first of all, to be adults, to take our responsibilities seriously, to give thank you where it is due. Come, let us offer this thanksgiving sacrifice that is the Mass. It is right and just.